Hey everyone, welcome to Mighty Kids Digital. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Come on, clap your hands like this. You know this song. Yeah. This is like this. We're here for you. Let your spirit move as we shout your praise from our hearts to your ears. All the glory is yours. Now forevermore. Hear our worship. All we can give is for you. Come on, let's sing. We're here. We're here for you. Nobody else but you. Come on, sing for you. So we dance, so we dance, yeah. yeah. And we sing, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we worship. You are, you are King. We give for you, yeah. And we give everything, everything, yeah, to the one who is worthy. If you love Jesus this morning, hey. yeah, we're going to sing the bridge just like you know it already. You ready, church? Come on, are you ready? Let's sing this together. Come on. If you don't come, we won't move. We're desperate, Lord, for a touch from you. Sing. If you don't come, come on. We won't move. Yeah. We're desperate, Lord, for a touch from Come on. If you don't come, we won't move. We're desperate, Lord, for a touch from you. You don't come. We won't move. Desperate, Lord. about. Hey Mighty Kids, it's your pal Jared here and I am so excited to be able to share the Word of God with you this week for Mighty Kids Digital. Now this month we're going to be talking about getting to know Jesus and I get to share one of my favorite stories in the history uh, of history. We're going to be talking about the resurrection story this week. Now Last Sunday, we celebrated Resurrection Sunday. Some people call it Easter. Uh, but as Christians, Resurrection Sunday is probably the biggest, most special uh, holiday that we celebrate, right up there with Christmas. So today, we're gonna take a quick look into why Resurrection Sunday is so special. Resurrection Sunday, that's a tongue twister. Resurrection Sunday, try say that five times fast. So what does resurrection mean anyways? Well, when things are gone, they're usually gone for good. Like, for example, when you eat a cookie and you finish that cookie, that cookie's not gonna come back. It's done, it's gone forever. Uh, it's the same if you've ever had your heart broken like I have. Had your heart broken like I have. And you've had one of your pets uh, die. It's kind of the same thing. Once they're gone, they're gone. They're, once they're gone, they're not coming back. And I don't mean to make you guys sad, I promise. But that's just the way things work in this world that God has made. People also that have died, they're, they're gone forever. Well, I don't want to give you a spoiler. So, here's where things get weird. On the third day after he was crucified, Jesus came back from the dead. Wait, what? Yep, he resurrected. And that means that what resurrection means is basically Jesus said, nope, to death and he came back to life. Let's read what the Bible says about this in Luke chapter 24, verses one through eight. But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. 
So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. It's crazy, right? Verse 4. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. They were shiny, they were bright, they were dazzling. Verse 5. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? Let's pause there really quick. So these women, they went into a great Jesus' tomb. That's where they put people who had died back then. Nowadays, we put people in, you know, cemeteries. You know, they bury them. But back then, you just found a nice empty cave and you put a big, heavy, heavy stone in front of it. And that's where they would put their they're dead. So the angels who the ladies were talking to, we're going to go back to verse 5. That's why the angels asked them, verse 5, the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, or the angels, as we found out later, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He has risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man, another word for Jesus, must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and that he would rise again on the third day then they remembered that he had said this so they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened that was verses not that was verse 9. wow isn't that incredible so resurrection means if you want like the exact thing of what it means the act or process of bringing something back to life. Now, this is not very common, right? When you, like, like I said, when you eat your cookie, you don't resurrect it. You don't, it doesn't come back brand new. Once it's gone, it's gone. So resurrection is a very special, very rare occurrence. So when Jesus died on the cross, he didn't stay dead forever. Now, I have a question. Do you mighty kids know that Jesus is more powerful than any superhero ever? Even if the Avengers and the Justice League and the Powerpuff Girls and Thanos all joined forces and tried to battle Jesus, he would wipe them out with just a little flick of his finger. That's how powerful Jesus is. He's more powerful than anything or anyone to ever exist or to ever even be imagined. Because, you know, we know the Avengers aren't real. Uh, and after Jesus died on the cross for us, he still had one more thing to prove, that he was more powerful than death itself. So let's take a quick look at today's key scripture. Romans 6, verses 7 through 9. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. And verse 9 is our key. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. Those are some incredible words right there, mighty kids. Let me read to that last part one more time. Death no longer has any power over him. Wow. Do you wanna know why this is so important? For that, let's read verses seven and eight again. Roman, again, Romans six, seven and eight. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. Whoa! And since we died with Christ, we know that we will also live with Him. That's incredible. Now, I know that's a pretty crazy thought, right? So let me break it down. Actually, I have a question for you, mighty kids. Who wants to be like Jesus? Raise your hand. And, okay, good, good. You want to be like Jesus? Okay, raise your hand. Good, good. Now, Jesus was full of love. So that means that we have to be full of love. If you want to be like Jesus, Jesus was full of love. We have to be full of love. That's how it works. Do you want to be like Jesus? Well, Jesus was so nice to everyone. He was just truly kind and compassionate. So that means that if we want to be like Jesus, we have to be nice and kind and compassionate. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, Jesus stood up for truth. So that means that we have to stand up for what's true and honest. No lying, no lies. Nothing like that. Uh, Jesus cared about people that most other people would ignore. He cared about the weirdos and the sinners. Um, so what that, what does that mean for us? If we want to be like Jesus, we have to care about everyone, not just the cool kids or the nice people. We have to care about everyone. Here's another one. Jesus was obedient. Ah, oh, I know. 
that one hurts a little bit. So we have to obey our parents. Yes, Jesus was obedient. We want to be like Jesus. We have to be obedient. All right. You still with me, mighty kids? Okay, you still want to be like Jesus? Well, Jesus died and resurrected. Wait, so you're saying that we can do that? Yeah. Yes, you can. Si se puede. Not si se puede, all right? We can actually, we actually get to do this twice as Christians. Uh, the first time is a symbol. That's what baptism is. A baptism is an act of faith that shows Jesus that we're giving our lives to him. When we get baptized, and I know some of you mighty kids have already taken this step, and some of you will pretty soon. When we get baptized and you go down into the water, it's a symbol. What that means, it's, it's symbolizing you dying to your old life of sin, and when you come out of the water, it's like your resur it's a symbol of you resurrecting to your new life in Christ. So you want to be like Jesus? Jesus died and resurrected? Well, that's when we get baptized. That's our, that's our act of faith saying that, hey, we want to be like Jesus. We are going to, you know, when they baptize you, we're going to die to our old selves, be raised new in Jesus Christ. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 15 through 18, the Bible talks about how those Christians, those believers who have passed away before the return of the Lord, how they're actually going to get resurrected first when Jesus comes back for his church. So when the rapture happens and Jesus comes back for his church, like my grandparents and any other believers who have already died here on this earth, they're going to get resurrected first. And then, of course, you and me, those of us who are still alive, who haven't died yet, we're going to get like a lightning bolt just straight to heaven. It's going to be incredible. And oh my gosh, heaven, mighty kids, that's like a whole other lesson. But heaven is so incredible. It's so amazing. It makes Disneyland look like time out or like a dumpster fire. Like, like heaven is so incredible. You can't even imagine how wonderful it's going to be for us to be there. And then re I get to see my grandparents again. Anybody who has, was, who has died but was a believer was saved. We're going to get to see them once again. So even though the resurrection story started when Jesus came back from the dead, it's still not finished. It was more like a to be continued. The resurrection story will be fully complete when Jesus comes back for his church and we all get to celebrate together in heaven. The last thing I want to say is, why in the world did Jesus go through all this trouble? It sounds like a lot, right? Death, resurrection, going, coming back, all this crazy stuff. I'm just going to make it real simple, mighty kids. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, just Jesus, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, meaning will not suffer, but have everlasting life. Jesus did all that because he loves you, mighty kids. So if you're watching today, I want to remind you that Jesus loves you. He went through all of this trouble, trouble. He went through all of this just for you, just for you and me, so we could be together with him in heaven forever. That is so amazing and it blows my mind and it makes me so very, very grateful. Jesus saved you and me and all of us from death. He saved us all from sin. He resurrected. He showed his power just because he loves us. He loves you and he loves me. And that, mighty kids, puts a big, a big, big smile on my face to know that's how much Jesus loves me. So let's go ahead and let's pray. Go ahead. You don't, you don't have to do your hands like this. I'm not sure why I do it. Um, but you can if you want to. It's fun. It makes praying fun. Uh, but let's bow our heads, meaning head down, close our eyes, and let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your incredible word and your mighty, mighty power. You have power over death. We don't have to be afraid of death anymore since you are in control of everything, Lord. We praise you because you conquered death just so we could live forever with you. Your love for us is so incredible and we love you too. I pray, Jesus, that you would keep all of these mighty kids safe and in your blessings. In Jesus' name, Amen. I was waiting for you guys to say it first. Amen. It's been a pleasure, mighty kids. I love you all, and I pray to see you guys really, really soon. Adios. I challenge you to draw the empty tomb.
next week.